Is determinism compatible with responsibility? Well, Hayek thinks it is. I think the opposite. I think that if determinism is true, that undermines free will rather severely, and that undermines responsibility rather severely. Uh, now, as we'll talk about in this video, there are lots of people, uh, including people who make a much better case for it than Hayek, who disagree with me, who think that determinism and responsibility are absolutely compatible. Even if determinism and free will aren't compatible, they still think determinism and responsibility are. Hayek was writing before a lot of the people who wrote who came up with the better arguments than Hayek, so you can't completely fault him uh, for not coming up with Harry Frankfurt's Frankfurt cases before Frankfurt, and that's not really what his book is trying to do anyway. Um, but I think his argument is kind of bad. So Hayek's argument, like most of his arguments, is very instrumental. If you've watched the video on Constitution of Liberty Chapter 5, which probably is going to come out after this, so you may not have had the opportunity to see it yet, but it'll come out soon. Um, if you've seen that video, then you know that Hayek's argument for responsibility is essentially if you hold people responsible for their consequences of their actions by attributing the consequences to them, you uh, make them act more rationally. You help them to use the knowledge that they have available to them to make decisions that will have good consequences so they can get the results of those, and so by giving people an incentive to act rationally, they're going to act more rationally. And he thinks if that's the grounding for responsibility being something that, that we should have as a moral and ethical concept, it works better under determinism than it does under uh, a sort of libertarian view of free will. Libertarian not in the political sense, but in the metaphysical sense, right? Hayek thinks that if people are determined by their surroundings and by their circumstances, well, then holding them responsible is going to have an impact on that. Whereas if they're less affected by those things, they can make alternative choices that undermines the grounding that you have for holding people responsible. So that's sort of Hayek's case. Here's why I think that case kind of radically fails. One, when you talk about holding people responsible, you're talking about saying that they deserve something. That they are either praiseworthy or blameworthy for whatever actions they have. If you're just saying, oh, we should treat them as if they're praiseworthy or blameworthy because that is positive consequence, I don't think that works. And that's sort of a recurring complaint I have about Hayek. And I know it's sort of boring and stupid and annoying, but here's why it's important, number two, after number one, we can imagine all sorts of cases where we would say, oh yeah, it seems really ethically important that we hold people responsible in this particular case, but it doesn't have the sort of positive effects that Hayek wants to talk about. So for example, imagine a multiple child rapist, someone who's truly horrific and horrible, and they deserve something bad happening to them. Okay. What if we can make a life model decoy, like in Marvel Comics, of the guy that looks exactly like him, that bleeds when you prick it, but that doesn't have a soul or any sort of experience of the world, it's just a good fake. And you could convince people that this guy is being punished in whatever way you think is suitable. Maybe it's not the death penalty, maybe it's not torture, which I, I probably don't think we should do either of those two things either. But whatever suitably long prison sentence there is, or whatever punishment you think is appropriate. Now that guy appears, everybody believes he's suffering it, even though it's only the life model decoy, not the actual guy. And in fact, we've taken the actual guy and we've given him um, a moon-based paradise, right? The guy doesn't have contact with their people, um, so he's not able to hurt them. So any um, practical like, benefits of punishing him you've taken care of by just eliminating his contact with people. Maybe you give him, like, life model decoys of the people he would like to hurt, so that he's not actually hurting anyone, but he still gets... Like, you're just giving him good stuff. You give him, like, a nice house and everything. It's just no one knows this. Well, Hayek's case doesn't say anything about why that would be wrong. As long as nobody knows about it, and as long as everybody think he's, thinks he's being punished, Hayek says... He doesn't say this... But the implication of his justification for holding people responsible wouldn't rule this out as a viable thing to do to the guy, to give him something great and just make it seem as though you've given him something bad uh, in order to influence people's decisions. And it works the opposite way, too. You can imagine someone who made a bargain with somebody that they're going to work really hard for a certain period of time and they came up with this great idea um, and we're not going to reward them for it, we're going to torture them horribly, but we're just going to make everybody think 
or believe that he got the reward and so incentivize them to do, you know, helpful things. Um, in that case, hey, yet again, we've fulfilled everything that Hayek's, like, idea about responsibility says we should, and it doesn't seem why it would be wrong to do this to the guy. Besides, like, utilitarian things of causing him pain. Whereas if you were, like, utilitarian, you would think, maybe on paper, that giving the child murderer guy uh, lots of good stuff would actually be the right thing to do as long as people believe he got bad stuff. Because it increases happiness by, one, both fulfilling Hayek's goal of giving people good things, but also by, two, making the guy more happy than he otherwise would have been had he gotten what people who have a view that's more robust than Hayek's would say the guy actually morally deserved. Okay, so that's why I think Hayek's view, or Hayek's justification, fails. So now let's look at a justification that does a lot better. Um, I'm not going to jump into Frankfurt cases right away. So that's... Frankfurt cases are cases where you pull apart free will and responsibility a little bit, and you show that it's possible for people to have situations where they don't actually have choices, but it's still okay to hold them morally responsible. We will get to that. We'll talk about that. But first, I want to motivate the debate between libertarianism and compatibilism a little bit. And so this is a stance on free will, not responsibility specifically, but but here's what the views are. And they have to do with determinism. So determinism is the view that if you take any state of the universe, so uh, the universe is in this position like that. There are certain atoms here, certain atoms there. A state is a full description of the universe uh, at a current mo at a moment in time. Determinism says that for any state of the universe and the laws of physics conjoined, there is a true statement you can make about a future state of the universe. Basically what determinism is. If things are a certain way, you're guaranteed to get a certain outcome later on because that's how the laws of physics work. Okay. Is determinism compatible with people acting freely? Well, people who are incompatibilists say, no, the two things are not compatible with one another. And their reason generally goes something along these lines. If it is true that a previous state of the universe determines everything in the future, then when you're making choices between one thing and another thing, that's just an illusion. The choice you're going to make is determined by a state of the universe that existed before you were even born. You're going to make a particular choice, so you don't actually have a choice. You don't actually have two different options. Um, Peter Van Inwagen's argument for this goes something as follows. He says, imagine there's a judge, and this judge is in a situation where he can stop someone from being executed by raising his hand. That's just the customs of his culture. The judge isn't paralyzed, he's sober, he hasn't been threatened, he's thought a very long time about this, and he has come to the conclusion that he is not going to raise his hand. He has two clear choices before him. Van Inwagen says, all right, let's lay out our argument. Let's say that determinism is true, and that a prior state of the universe from, again, before the judge was born, plus the laws of nature, imply state in the future. The guy gets executed, maybe. Premise two. Let's assume that if the judge had raised his hand, that the guy wouldn't have been executed. All right, premise three. If it were in the judge's power to raise his hand, then it would be in the judge's power to falsify the guy getting killed in the future. I'm not going to enumerate the further premises more, but basically that means that if it's actually in the judge's power to raise his hand, then that puts it within his power to invalidate either the laws of physics or a previous state of the universe. Because the laws of physics in the previous state of the universe imply that the other thing is going to happen. So if he can invalidate the thing from happening, he can invalidate either the laws of the universe or the way the universe was in the past, which is absolutely ridiculous. So clearly, if determinism is true, this guy does not have it in his power to do the simple act of raising his right hand. All right, so that's what incompatibilists think. They think that when we're talking about free will, we have to mean determinism is false. And people who are, people who believe in libertarian free will don't just believe they're incompatible, they also believe that determinism is false and um, free will is true. 
Whereas somebody who's what's called a hard incompatibilist would believe, actually, you just don't have free will, it's an illusion, and determinism is true. Okay, so most people, a lot of people, would link pretty strongly in their minds the ideas of free will with responsibility. So if you don't have free will, you probably wouldn't have responsibility. Well, Harry Frankfurt, about 10 years after Hayek writes Constitution of Liberty, comes up with what's called a Frankfurt case, which is basically an example of how you could be responsible but clearly not have choices available to you and arguably not be able to exercise free will. So imagine you go in for neurosurgery uh, because you've got a tumor. And when the guy is taking out the tumor, he's such like a, a Hillary Clinton fanatic, for example, that he puts in your brain a microchip that if you consider voting for someone besides Hillary Clinton, the microchip is going to trigger, and it's going to cause you to instead vote for Hillary Clinton. In fact, the microchip might trigger a cascade of thoughts in your mind and reasons to make you vote for Hillary Clinton so that you believe it is in fact your own decision. But again, the chip only triggers in the event that you decide to vote for someone besides Hillary Clinton. Otherwise, it never triggers. All right, let's assume you go into the voting booth and the chip never triggers and you vote for Hillary Clinton. Are you responsible for your vote for Hillary Clinton? Well, clearly. Did you have an option to not vote for Hillary Clinton? You didn't know about the chip, but if you had chosen not to vote for her, you, you still would have, and you would have thought that it was your freely arrived at choice. Are you still responsible if the chip never triggers? Pretty clearly, yes. It's only in the case that the, that the chip doesn't trigger that you're not responsible for your decision, that you were coerced into something. So, you can pretty clearly have responsibility without libertarian free will. And a lot of people use this also as an argument for why free will may be compatible with determinism. It doesn't seem as though... I think it seems as though you don't have free will in this situation if you can't decide between alternatives. It seems like you're being forced. Um, but a lot of people use this partially as evidence for compatibilism. Uh, and it also brings to mind another thing mm -hmm. that is necessary for free will besides simply alternate possibilities. What's also necessary is that a choice is caused appropriately and properly by you as opposed to by something else. So, in the case that the chip triggers in your head and you vote for Hillary Clinton for that reason, even though it seems like a free choice, it's not because it wasn't caused appropriately by your will. Whereas if the chip doesn't trigger, it seems like what's necessary for free will is there uh, in your decision. So, let's imagine that indeterminism is true, that determinism is false, that the choices you make in the future are not determined by prior states of the universe. That doesn't necessarily imply that your choices are being caused by the correct thing. Maybe they're just being caused by chance. Maybe there's a 50% chance you'll vote one way and a 50% chance you'll vote the other way, and it's random. So it's not enough to have alternate possibilities. The choices you make have to be caused appropriately. And so another thing that... Um, libertarians, libertarian free will people will come back and say is, all right, if determinism is true, then your choices aren't being caused appropriately. Um, it's not just that maybe Frankfurt did give us a good reason to think that alternate possibilities might not be necessary, or at least not necessary in the sense we thought before, but your choices under determinism are being caused a lot more closely uh, to, to the chip going off than to the chip not going off. Uh, and so they'll say something like that. All right, I'm coming up on 15 minutes here, so I'm going to stop the video. If you're interested in this sort of thing, maybe we'll do another video on free will uh, in the future, dive more deeply into this stuff. I had more, so much more stuff that I wanted to say and I didn't get to. I hope you enjoyed this. In the end, I think libertarian free will is probably true and compatibilism is probably false, and that in order to be held responsible for your actions, it would be bad if determinism were true. Uh, Rawls would be much closer to being right that there's no inherent moral value in the way you choose because it was just determined by your circumstances, by how you were raised and by your genetics, and it's not from something outside you.